no escaping reason, no denying purpose, because as we both know, without purpose, we would not exist. Hi, my name is Tom Ackeroy, and I am one of the co-founders of Vulcan Clothing. And it's been an incredible ride. There's been so many ups and downs, and I guess that's what life is all about. So when I was growing up, surfing was my biggest release. Even though I played every other sport, they all kind of fell off one by one. I was really good in, in Baseball, football, basketball, soccer was one of my biggest sports as well. And as I got older and my surfing uh, skills elevated, they all dropped off. And now it's my biggest crutch in life. Um, just look at how beautiful this is. The waves are small, but it's still amazing. Every day at work, I made sure that I had my lunchtime surf, even at school. I made sure that even though I lived on campus, I drove down the eight, paddled out, and had my release. This is the best therapy that, that anyone can have. I was able to bring that passion of surfing and being outdoors and, and skating and snowboarding into my business and that's why I think that I was so happy and I can honestly say I've had two jobs my first job at Vision and right before I retired I worked at O'Neill to rebrand them but for the other say 17 years it wasn't work it was fun I enjoyed what I was doing so much that it just, it wasn't work. I had great people who worked with me. I had this environment to be able to go release in and it's a dream come true. So the first time I surfed, I was just right down the beach here in Huntington. And that first wave I stepped up on, it was an experience that I will never ever forget. I rode the wave in, it was just a little teeny whitewash, and I knew that that one wave changed my life. It taught me how to strive for something, work on it, and eventually it paid off. One of the, the bigger things that I had to get through in my life is the fear of the unknown. And I think that holds back a lot of people. And that's kind of how it is in business too. You know, there's some mornings you wake up and you, the anxiety of what is going to go on that day scares you. But if you just stick to your plan and have the confidence that you can pull it off, you're going to be okay. I started off as a business major and um, uh, I started off at Orange Coast College. It was a uh, junior college here in Orange County and I started there because um, I was surfing competitively and I didn't know exactly if I wanted to take that to the next level and become professional and go on the tour and, 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 and chase that dream or go to school, get educated and, and get a, a, a real job. Um, so start off as a business administration major at Orange Coast, but I was always taking art and design classes on the side. I always had a full schedule uh, because I needed to have that creative outlet. Um, second year in, when my professors pulled me aside and said, hey Tom, like, why are you a business major? And I'm like, well, you know, my dad wants me to and, and my mom feels good about it and you know, I want to be a businessman, I want to make money and, and, uh, and I just, when I was telling my professor this, I was like, 
oh my God, I don't feel comfortable saying this. And I go, and he goes, well, you should, you should become a design uh, major. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's scary. Like, do, do artists make money? Do they become successful? Do, can you get a job? Uh, because in the back of my head, art was always this elective. And um, so he convinced me to, to make a change. And I had a philosophy class that semester as well. And, and I remember walking out of this class after some crazy discussion about yourself and, and, and who you how you're projected in the world and how you feel about yourself. And it was like a giant two by four that hit me in the back of the leg. And I was like, oh my God. And I go, I'm 18 years old. I have to start making decisions for myself. I have to make a stand. Mommy and daddy aren't going to be there all the time. So I decided I'm gonna switch my major. So when I was in school, I, during my last semester, I kind of went into a full panic mode. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I had a great skill set in graphic design and an ambition to just get out there and, and do whatever I can. And uh, so my mom said, okay, for your graduation present, present, I will buy you two suits so you can go out and, and, and interview in. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's great because I, I kind of felt that I should go work at an advertising agency. Um, but that really never happened. I had my first job interview out in the surf and, uh, and it was weird because the, the guy who interviewed me um, worked at Vision Skateboards and he was uh, the creative director who was in control of all the, the uh, skateboard deck art, stickers, t-shirts, and uh, I saw him on the water after I graduated and he said, so what are you gonna do? And I go, I'm gonna go interview for an ad agency job, maybe, you know, art director. And he's all, well, why don't you just come by Vision Skateboards on Monday and see if you like it, and if you do, I'll give you a job. And I'm like, yeah, you know what, I kinda, I felt like I was bigger than just going to work for a skate company. So I show up on Monday at Vision Skateboards, and uh, it was the ultimate dream job. I was doing exactly what I was taught in school, Plus, I worked on one of the most iconic skate graphics of the 80s called the Mark Gonzalez board. And I sat there with my technical pins and my rulers and my radius corners, and uh, it was amazing. Uh, the only bummer was that it, was, it only paid me $6.50 an hour. So how am I going to tell everybody including my parents, that I'm making 650 an hour when all my other friends are making like 30 to 40 grand. My first W-2 was $12,000 for that year. And I was embarrassed. So, and my, and my boss said, you know what, this is what you get paid. And I'm like, you know what, coming out of college, I, I deserve more. He goes, this is all I'm gonna give you. So I started freelancing at night and that freelance business got so big that I started my own design firm. When I started that whole design firm, I was able to do all the creative the way I wanted to. And this wall represents that creative. I um, grew up in the punk rock age and everything was black and white. And a lot of op art was used in it. And uh, I had these op art books that uh, uh, I picked up at a cheap bookstore and uh, so I used to cut and paste and, and, and put together walls like this and uh, it visually it's very strong but it, it causes chaos and I look back at my life back then starting Macaray Designs, I had a brand new baby, a mortgage, car payments, I had no job, full chaos when Vulcan started, full chaos. I was just starting my company, Volcom started. I was working eight hours at McElroy and Volcom was in my building right next door. I was working another eight hours for Volcom doing their marketing and running everything through my firm. So talk about chaos. So now I had 
two companies that I had to work for, Mac, building macro designs and making sure that my investment through Sweat Equity with Volcom was whole. With Macroid Communications, um, I brought in a SDSU alum, fraternity brother, Tim Garrett. He brought in the marketing and media side where I had the design side. And combined, we were a force to be reckoned with. There was nothing or no firm that was like that in the action sports industry. I would say three quarters of the staff surfed or skated or snowboarded, so everyone had the same insights. And um, it was great. We started off with one of my biggest clients, Quicksilver in Billabong. And Quick became larger than Billabong, and then we brought on Vans, and then we got into the video game arena where we launched Tony Hawk and all his franchised video games. And then from there, Activision hired us to do several of their games, uh, eventually working on the Xbox, the launch of the Xbox, which was a really, really great project for us. Um, we worked on uh, the design of the box and all of the uh, advertisement for that and we rolled out Halo and a couple other AAA rated games for Microsoft. So where we started from basic designing t-shirts, one off for 350, we ended up working with some of the biggest names in the very beginning. Um, even though we all worked with clothing companies or with or for clothing companies, we really didn't know how difficult it was to make clothes. So for the first couple of years, it was just trial and error. We did everything wrong. We put fabrics on board shorts that would just fall apart, but they were cool because they did fall apart. Everything was punk rock. It was just collage, cut, uh, clip art, cut art, op art. Um, so we had no money, so we had to kind of um, pioneer ways of getting our marketing out there and producing clothes that we don't even know what we're doing. All we knew is that we had a passion, which was surf, skate, snow. Uh, we had a passion for art. We had a passion for music. And we just wanted to combine that vibe into a clothing line. So this is our first quarterly report for our first board meeting. Uh, it was an exciting time for us. We really didn't know exactly where we were sitting after um, seven or eight months. And what really is, is hilarious is the sales for the five shops that we had, Hot Skates, Frog House, Surf and West, Spider, BK Sports, came to a grand total of $1,347, but we gave out $10,000 worth of clothes to seed the market and that really paid off. These are some of the first designs right when we started. I did a vast majority of these. And then our first poster, and this poster is actually in color, but we just could not afford color copiers back in the day, so that's why this report is in black and white. Volcom was able to start off in a bedroom, move to a garage, then eventually move into office space, warehouse space, and now Volcom sits in a building that's over 150,000 square feet. Every day, someone else would show up and they wouldn't even be getting paid. They just wanted to work at Vulcan because of the energy. They knew that this thing was going to be great. Some of the best pro surfers in the world, snowboarders and skaters were wearing our stuff and they were sponsored by other people. And uh, it just became this infectious animal that, that everyone wanted to jump on board and ride. And uh, it, was, it was interesting times. Um, there was absolutely no rules. There was no consistency. 
Uh, and that's what was so awesome about it because um, there was no manual that you could go grab and look at and go, oh, this is how you start, this is how you run a business. Um, and that's kind of how, you know, all of us felt. We were just coming right out of college. We were super young and we had no idea what we were going to do. And we just kind of found our passions. Everybody that worked at Volcom had a passion and they were all from the um, action sports um, world. If you weren't a surfer, a skater, a snowboarder, you were motocross, you were whatever, whatever you were into, you were just elevated to, to come join the team at some point for, for money or not. And, uh, and that's how we did a lot of uh, promotional stuff in the beginning. Uh, we would use all these other riders, they'd be at our events or they'd be where we were and going in to get accounts and um, it was kind of cool but you know there was a business plan but the business plan was thrown out the door probably three months in. It was the company was reevaluated all the time and you know you always kind of reinvent and do a business plan every year but as soon as that's finished, that tells you where you're at that day, but you never know what's going to happen the next day. As you walk down the hallways of Vulcan, you can really sense the, the, uh, the creativity. Um, everything is, was done by, and is still done by, the artists, the athletes, and uh, good friends of, of the company. Um, as we walk over this way, uh, this is one of the first pieces that I did back in 92. I'm super stoked that it's still on the wall. This kid was Ian Gaunt. He was a snowboarder. Still a great guy. With the Yay Youth Against Establishment t-shirt. So this represents kind of how I grew up with punk rock and collage and just making art with what you have. Um, it's not fancy, but it makes a point. Going back to everything we did back then was black and white because we couldn't afford color. Um, and, uh, and this is just a, a great piece to see on the wall. There was no rules. It was all about trial and error and, um, and we were just, you know, all the other companies were going this way and we just went that way and uh, um, that's what made Volcom so exciting is because we are on our own path and uh, we can basically do whatever we want because there was, everyone was making decisions and, and, and Rich was leading those decisions and it was it was really it was a great time and uh, we did some of our best work. All right so this is the trade show costume uniform history area. Uh, each year for action sports retailer and surf expo you would have a, a different uniform for for each show, so it was a big thing to come up with, with a different look. Every employee was dressed up with the costumes, and um, it was so much different than any other company. And uh, everyone was so jealous of, of the Vogue booth because it was always the best. So in the beginning, when you're starting a company, um, you write a business plan, and the day you open, it's obsolete because life changes. And so you have to really get into the hustle. You have to work your butt off. You have to figure out how I'm going to sell myself or my widget that, that you have. And uh, for what I did was I reached out to my whole network of sponsors that sponsored me through surfing throughout the years and asked them, hey, what kind of graphics do you need? Do you need graphics for t-shirts, video covers, ads, whatever. And the community reached back out to me and said, hey, we need all of that. But as a, say, as a student, I'd be looking for a company that has a culture, that has a business model that 
fits your passion. And that is super important. So you gotta like look at your passion, look at the companies that revol revolve around your passion and really just hone in and, and work your hardest to get in. Right now with the climate, it's pretty difficult to, to get one-on-ones. It's, it's all Zoom interviews and, and that sucks because you can really get a good read from people when you're sitting with them and you feel their energy and they feel your energy. And, uh, and so you have to figure out how do you make your future employer feel your energy, feel your skill set, feel the person you are, feel your, how in, your integrity, your, your honesty, your, just your, all your top attributes need to come through to an employer so that they can go, hey, this person is right for, for us. This person can elevate us to get to the next level with our company and we want to hang out with this person. I would definitely broaden your horizons, get involved in whatever you can at school, student government, clubs, fraternities, um, or outside influences. Um, always stay outdoors. You need to always put in your time outdoors and go to museums and go, you know, go see what pop culture is all about. Go see what culture is all about. Go see what, what anything that will spark an idea is all about. Um, it's, it's so refreshing to meet other people as well. Um, broaden your horizons with the, with the, your network that you're, you know, your, your little group of people that you're with. Uh, it's kind of scary to go out and meet different people, but I tell you, it pays off. Not all the time, but most of the time it will pay off. It's such a great thing to listen to other people and, and hear what they're going through and, and kind of what their passions are. And, and a, another really good thing is to read books and, and, and read, uh, one of my favorite books is The Celestine Prophecy, which uh, after I read that, that broadened my horizons to, to no limits. It's all about a story about how coincidences happen for a reason and if you're open and if your soul is is open to new experiences in the world and the universe and other people and other opportunities it will pay off uh, things happen for a reason and you know i've always been told that i've been lucky and luck is by design not default i always have said that if you are very passionate about something, it will pay off. If you take risk, it will pay off. If you surround yourself with really good people that will better yourself, it will pay off. And the number four thing is to believe in yourself. Once you believe in yourself and you have the confidence to go out and conquer any goal that you have, then that will pay off. So um, I've always preached that luck is by design, not default. Things aren't just gonna happen if you're sitting around and not doing anything. Things are going to happen if you get up, get going, get outside, go meet people, take risk, chase your passion or find your passion and surround yourself with a good community of people. It will pay off.